Full text search works very differently to a term level query. At a high level, term level queries run against the exact value stored in the field. Full text queries run against analyzed text and allows for complex text queries, providing a lot of functionality over how documents are matched. I'll explain what text analysis is and why it's performed. We have an index containing product reviews. Here's an example from one of the reviews. The dehumidifier helps dry my laundry really quickly. It's great looking, efficient, and I use the water from the tank to water my plants. It's quite noisy though. One difference between this sort of text and the type of text we've stored in keyword fields so far is the length of the text. Keyword fields are used to store shorter pieces of text where exact or almost exact matching is frequently done. Paragraph length text like this, by nature, is going to require a different set of tools for matching. If we store the data in a keyword field and wanted to find reviews that mention drying laundry quickly, our options are pretty limited. We could use a wildcard query matching for laundry star quickly, but we'd also need to look for quickly star laundry in case someone had written it quickly dries my laundry. We'd also need to make sure the query was case insensitive, which would make a slow query even slower. Another option would be a regular expression, which again would perform very badly and be painful to write. And how could we deal with when somebody wrote, it dries my laundry really quickly, it dries my laundry real quick, or my laundry has never gotten dry so quick. This is the sort of problem full text search is designed to solve. Here's how we could solve for some of these issues using the default full text search options. To use full text search, we store the review in a text field, then write a match query. It doesn't matter which order we put the query terms in, and neither does the case make a difference. How is running a match query over a text field able to do all of this? Two words, text analysis. When text is stored in a text field, it's not stored in its exact form. The analysis process, conducted by an analyzer, takes text and produces a stream of tokens which are maintained in the inverted index. A token is a fragment of the original text, usually an individual word or derived from an individual word. When you run a query, your search criteria goes through the same analysis process, resulting in another stream of tokens. Elasticsearch then looks for matches where tokens from your search criteria are in the field you're matching against. An analyzer has three components. The first step in analysis is done by character filters. Character filters work on individual characters in the source text, adding, modifying, or removing characters. This step is commonly used to replace characters or remove them entirely if you wanted to take out formatting or HTML, for example. You're able to use multiple character filters in an analyzer and they are executed in the order they're defined. Character filters aren't required though. Once all character filters have completed their work or there aren't any character filters in the analyzer, the resulting or original text is sent to the tokenizer. The tokenizer splits up text into individual tokens. You must have exactly one tokenizer in the analyzer. The text is usually, but not always, split on word boundaries like spaces, full stops and other punctuation. Another very important role of the tokenizer is to record the position of each token in the original text, such as the start and end offsets. This data is used for some query types, as well as highlighting the search criteria in hits. The tokens produced by the analyzer are sent to the final step, the token filters. Token filters add, modify, or remove tokens produced by the tokenizer. This is another optional step, and like character filters, multiple token filters can be used in the analyzer. Token filters typically perform tasks like converting tokens to lowercase, removing tokens you don't want, like very short, common or rude words, and stemming, reducing a word to its root form. In the dehumidifier review, for example, the word quickly could be stemmed to just quick. There are several analyzers you can use in Elasticsearch and you're even able to craft your own by selecting the character filters, tokenizer and token filters you want. Text fields by default use the standard analyzer. We're able to see the output of the analysis process by using the Analyze API. So let's try that with a product review text. We make a post request to underscore analyze, providing the analyzer we want to use and the text we want analyzed in the request body. The standard analyzer doesn't have any character filters, 
it tokenizes based on word boundaries using the standard tokenizer, then lowercases each token. It also has a stop token filter, which is disabled by default, but can be used to remove tokens you don't want included, referred to as stop words. The output of the Analyze API shows us all the tokens that will be included in the contents of the text field. This is sometimes referred to as a bag of words. All the words in the original text are in the array of tokens, but they've been lowercase by the lowercase token filter. The start and end offsets and the position are also calculated for each token. Using different search criteria shows that not all the terms in the search criteria need to be in the field value in order to get a match. Searching for laundry quickly rabbit still produces a hit despite there being no mention of a rabbit in the review. Adding a couple more reviews will give us a better picture of what's going on. Running that same query for laundry quickly rabbit now produces three hits, the original for the dehumidifier and the two new documents. Notice the value of underscore score though. The rabbit review gets a higher score. All three search terms were matched in that document Two were matched in the dehumidifier review and only one in the note on full text search. Elasticsearch, or Lucene really, indicates this in the scores for the three hits. What if we only wanted to match documents containing all three of those terms? We can tell the match query to do this using the operator parameter. This narrows down the results to just the rabbit review. There's another useful parameter in the match query, minimum should match. We've used this before in bool queries to specify how many should clauses must match in order for a document to be a hit. It can also be used with a match query to specify how many of our query terms must match the text field for the document to be a hit. We can see this by changing the minimum should match value for this query and seeing how it affects the results. It's clear from what we've seen here the position of the terms in the hit doesn't matter. The query for really laundry rabbit with the minimum should match of three still produced a hit on the rabbit review despite the field terms not being in the same order as the query terms. We can look for tokens in order by searching for a phrase. A phrase is a sequence of terms in a specific order. When you search for a phrase, documents must have those same terms in that same order as the phrase. To search for a phrase, we use a match phrase query. This query only matches the dehumidifier review as that's the only one containing really and quickly in that order. The match phrase query has a really useful parameter called slop, which you can use to broaden your search. It allows for a certain number of terms between the terms in the phrase. As an example, if we searched for water plants, nothing will hit. If we want to look a bit wider and allow a single term between the words water and plants, we can add a slot parameter with a value of one. This finds the dehumidifier review because of the word my between water and plants being permitted by the slop. I've explained the high level view of full text search and shown how you're able to use different queries and parameters to match documents based on your own requirements. And this is only an introduction though. There's a lot more to full text search, but you can get a long way with the tools I'm gonna to give you in this course. There are two concepts I want to introduce now that you've seen some examples of searching for text, precision and recall. Precision and recall are two extremes of a query spectrum. At the precision end, you've been very precise with your criteria with very specific requirements for documents that need to match. Precise queries won't match many documents, but the ones that you do match will be exactly what you're looking for and the score differences between the hits will be small. The opposite end, recall, is when you're casting a very wide net when looking for matches. The requirements will be much looser and will result in more hits. Those hits will still match your query, but because your query is less strict, the hits you'll match will match to varying degrees and the score differences between the hits will be much larger. When crafting a full text query, you'll need to find the right balance between precision and recall. And what defines right balance is completely up to you and will be based on what your users expect to see. There are lots of tools available in Elasticsearch to help you strike that balance, wherever it may be. We'll cover some of these tools, but I encourage you to read through all the nitty gritty and the Elasticsearch documentation. 
and other material about full text search, relevance and information retrieval as a whole. The rabbit hole goes very deep.